All right, we're on unit two, day eight today. This is the last day of learning something new for this unit. If you take a look at your assignment sheet, uh, we're going to be talking about functions a little bit more. So expanding on what we did yesterday and combining a day from earlier on in this unit where we did evaluating. That was where we substituted a number in and then simplified it. So if we go to our unit two, day eight uh, notes page and scroll down to where our notes start, uh, we're going to talk about evaluating a function or writing something in the f of x um, way of writing of, of in, or in function notation, I say, is, is f of x. So if we take a look at this part, oh, oops, I forgot to do edit. Zoom, zoom. All right. Uh, so if we take a look at this right here, right, this f of x, I just want to make sure that we understand that it's basically the same thing as writing y equals in the front of an equation. So this is something we're used to seeing, y equals 2x plus 5. It can also be written as or f of x equals 2x plus 5. And let's talk about what this is stating here. So this is considered on the right side function notation. On the left side is something you're probably used to from last year when we were graphing, where it just said y equals. Just know that y and f of x are interchangeable when we're talking about graphing, but the one on the right side gives you a little more information. It will actually be able to give you what number you plug in for x and what number we're gonna get out. So if we were to, um, to take a look at the steps for evaluating a function. We know that evaluating a function from a few days ago means that you substitute a number into the equation and then you simplify it. So we're gonna do that today a bunch of times and it's gonna be the same idea that we did a few days ago, but now in our final answer, it's just gonna be written a little bit differently. It's gonna be written in what's called function notation. So the first thing we have to do to evaluate something in, uh, or to evaluate a function written in f of x notation is the first thing that we did a few days ago, and that's just substitute a number. So substitute. Oops. Substitute a number. In for a variable. In this case, I think it's always for x. So substitute a number in for x. So that's our first step. Then our next step is the same step that we did before. This is where we're going to simplify the expression or just finish it. So we're going to substitute it in and then we're going to actually try to get it down to a single number. And then my last step we are, we're gonna, this is where it's just different from before. We're gonna write the answer in this function notation. So write the answer as F, let's do lowercase actually, that's what it's usually written as, F of the number that you plugged in equals your answer, whatever you get out. So that's how we want you to write the answer in the end. So let's do an example here up above. So when we are on the left side, it's saying to evaluate when x is equal to negative 1. And the equation is y equals negative 3x plus 6. So we learned a couple days ago that we just plug in negative 1 for x and then we simplify. So this is y equals a negative times a negative is a positive 3 and three plus six is nine. So that's my final answer, y equals nine. The right side here is almost the identical equation uh, to start, but it's written in function notation and it's telling you to find f of negative one. So the thing about function notation is it gets rid of all this word, all these this wordage here and makes it a lot more succinct. So that's why people will use function notation because you don't have to write a sentence, the evaluate when x equals. You can just write find 
f of negative 1, and that's just stating plug in negative 1 for x because there's always an x that starts off right there. So now we're replacing the x in the equation. So we're going to replace this x right there with this negative 1. So as we do that, it's going to be f of negative 1 equals the same thing that we just did on the left side. So we said that a negative times a negative is a positive 3. And 3 plus 6 is 9. So if we compare these two answers, this one that we started with and this one that we did on the right side, the one on the left is not in function notation. The one on the right is. And we know that because of the F, which stands for function. It's got a parenthesis, and it tells you in that parenthesis what we plugged in. So it's telling you we plugged in negative 1, and if you plug in negative 1, you get what's on the right side here, which is 9. On the left side, though, it did not tell you all that information. You'd have to go back to the original question and see what you plugged in in order to get 9. On the right side, though, it told you within your final answer, it said in the function you plugged in negative 1 and you got 9. So people like writing uh, or dealing with function notation because it tells you what your uh, question is in the final answer. So it tells you you plugged in this number and you got this number out. So let's do a few more of those because they get a little more tricky as we, we go through. So on page two, oops, didn't mean to make that thing. All right, so let's go down, down. All right, so up top, it says use these functions. So we have g of x is 3x minus 7, h of x is 2x squared plus 8, and f of x is the absolute value. Those are those straight bars of x. So it says find the value of each function below. So this g function for number 1, we're going to use this equation right here. So that's what we're going to use for the, the first one. So g of 2 equals, we already know we're plug in, plugging in 2 for x, so that'd be 3 times the 2, and then minus 7. I ignore the h of x equation, the f of x, because this started with a g, so I'm only going to use the g equation here, the g function. So that would be 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 7 is negative 1. And that's our final answer, is it's in function notation. It tells you what number you plugged in, which was 2, and what number we got out in the final answer, which was negative 1. If we do this number 2, it starts with an F, so that means we're going to use this one. So F of negative 2.5 would be the absolute value of negative 2.5. This is where I'd use my calculator, the graphing calculator. So we go to math. Let me open it up. So we go to math on the left side that was under alpha. We arrow over to the right one under NUM and select abs. And then we plug in negative two, which you get the negative button next to period. So negative 2.5, I'm gonna close the, the abs or get out of it if you're in an 84 and press enter, you get positive 2.5. So now F of negative 2.5 is equal to positive 2.5. So that's our answer for number two. So those two are easy so far. Let's do the H one. That means we're going to use this one right here because it starts with an H right there. So if we plug in negative four, that'd be two times negative four squared plus eight. So according to my order of operations, or if you plug that in your graphing calculator, you'd have to do negative four times negative four first because you're supposed to do exponents. So that'd be two times 16 plus eight. According to my order of operations, I do my multiplication before my addition. And then in the end, I get 40. So my final answer, if I write it correctly, would be h of negative four. So that's stating what number you plugged in for x. You plugged in negative four. And we got out the number 40 is our final answer when we simplified and evaluated it. So that's our answer for number three. So that, that's plugging in numbers. So now we're going to start plugging in some variables. That's where it gets a little bit tougher. So I feel like that first half of your homework 
is not too bad or the first uh, part of your homework is not too bad because you're just plugging in numbers and seeing what you get out. This next part gets a little trickier and then the last part's the hardest part. So we kind of ramp it up. So this G function, so we know that G of X, I'm gonna write it above so I can scroll or focus in a little bit stronger here. We know that G of X from above is three X minus seven in the original. So this is stating not to replace it with a number, it's saying to replace it with a letter. So that means every time we see an X, we're not gonna replace it with a number, we're gonna replace it with the letter A, according to that. And then we try to simplify. Well, we can take away the parentheses and there's nothing else to simplify because those are not like terms. So my G of A, its final answer is just three A minus seven. There's nothing that we can do to it beyond that. So that's just asking you to replace the X with the letter A and then we're done. Number five is the G function as well. So I'm gonna rewrite that up above G of X equals three X minus seven. So that means we're gonna replace this X with this three B. So I'm gonna also take this three B and plug it in right there. So that'd be three times three B minus seven. And when I multiply the three times three B, that gives me nine B minus seven. And there's nothing more that I can do because these are not like terms, so I can't subtract them. One has a variable, one doesn't. So that would be my final answer is nine B minus seven. So that's number five. And then number six is even the toughest one. So I know the original, because we've just done it a few times, is three X minus seven. So now it's asking us to replace this X with this whole thing here, with this seven C minus one. So I'm gonna write a three and then in parentheses, instead of the X, I'm replacing it with seven C minus one. And I still have a minus seven on the outside to finish the problem. So let's see what we get if we distribute that three in. So that'd be 21 C minus three minus seven. So in the end, G of seven C minus one is equal to, that's 21 C. And then I can actually combine those two last um, terms, the negative three minus seven. And if you punch it in your calculator, you get negative 10 in the end. So 21 C minus 10 is your final answer. So that's, that's a tough, tough one, I think, uh, every year. And then seven, same g of x. So we haven't wandered off from that, at least that's good. Makes it simpler because we know what that equation is. So we're replacing x with this 5p plus three. So instead of writing three x, we write three times 5p plus three. And then minus seven. We multiply it, we get 15p plus nine minus seven. So in the end, we would get G of five P plus three equals 15 P nine minus seven is two, positive two. So that's my answer right there. So that's number seven. And the last one, it says find the value of three different pieces. So we're gonna do all three separate and then actually subtract and add them together. So I'm gonna write down what G is. We know that one, that's um, the three X minus seven. So let's do the G of negative three part. So that'd be three times negative three minus seven. So G of negative three is negative nine minus seven. G of negative three is negative 16. So that's uh, one third. So this is negative 16. When, when, we, um, when we think of G of negative three now, we can say, okay, that would equal negative 16. And then F of seven. So F of X, if we look above, was the absolute value one. So F of seven is the absolute value of seven. If we punch that in my calculator, I think in the end we get a positive seven out. 
So that'd be minus seven right there. And then H is the one with the X squared, I think, up above. So that was two X squared plus eight. So this is saying plug in zero for X. So that'd be two times zero squared plus eight. So that would be zero squared is zero. Two times zero plus eight would be zero plus eight. So that should be eight in the end. So now we have to figure out when we replace these three pieces up above here with the numbers, that was negative 16, that was seven, that was eight. And there was a minus sign between the first two and a plus sign between the second two. So we'll punch that in our calculator and do order of operations. And in the end, negative 16 minus seven is negative 23. Negative 23 plus eight is negative 15. Negative 23 plus eight, yeah, is negative 15 in the end. So that was my, that'd be my answer if we did them all. Then the last page is some graphing. This is something that kids like usually for the function notation. It's probably been a little bit since you've uh, had to graph at all. So it's asking you to find what value the y is if they give you x. So this is all giving you the g of x to begin. And we know that um, for ordered pairs, they're always written in x comma y. And the x motion is left to right from the center, left to right. And y is up or down from the center. So how much did it move? So let's just plot some points here. So this point right here would be at, if we do the x first, that's negative four. And we do the y, that would be three, right? If we do the next one, this x, where the x is from the center would be, it went three to the left. So that'd be negative three comma, and then it went two up. So that'd be negative three, two. So that's how we do ordered pairs. So let's see what they're asking us for. They're stating that if we plug in zero, okay, for my X. So that means we don't go left to right at all. We go zero. So that would be this point right here. This dot did not go left to right. What's my Y at that dot that I just created down uh, below the zero, zero point or the origin they call it. So we always start right here at zero, zero. So it's saying if it went from zero, where's that on the line for your Y value? Well, it looks like it's at negative one to me. So that's the answer they're looking for, for A. So negative two would be this point right here on the line because it went to the left two. And then how high did we go up for my Y value? It looks like we went all the way up to one for my Y value. So that's the answer that it's looking for there. And then three would be right here. I'm dotting it out so you can see it. So where's that dot on the line? Well, it's right here. I'll make it a little thicker. So what's that Y value there? Well, it looks like if we count down, we went down one, two, three, four. So that'd be negative four for that answer. So you just gotta find the X value and look to see where that's crossing the Y value at that point. So let's take a look at number 10. So this is stating for the first one, if I go to one, let's see, if I go to one, what's my Y value? Well, if I go to one, it looks like it could be right there. These are harder to tell, um, but I, I wanna say it crosses right where I created that dot, okay? So it was right here, so where I created the dot. So how high is that? What's my Y value? Well, it looks like it's at two to me. And if we go to zero, it looks like this um, curved line crosses at, for my Y value, it doesn't look like it goes up either. It doesn't go left to right or up or down there. So it looks like it's at zero. Then if I go negative two, it looks like it could be right where this dot is. So that dot that's on the left side looks like it's at negative two comma four for that 
y value. So it's giving you the x values for these in the parentheses, and you're just finding the y value on the actual um, graph. So then our last question, let's find the value of all these. So let's go to 1. So that's right here. We'll go all the way up to when we intersect it. So it looks like we intersect maybe right at the very top there. I'll make it a little bit darker. So how high is that at the very top? Well, it looks like it's going to be at 1, 10. So that'd be my answer for A. If we go to negative 6 for my y, or for my x value. How high? Where's it cross? Maybe like right there is where it crosses. So that looks like it could be at, what do you guys think, 5? Looks like 5 to me. And the last one, negative 3. Ooh, it looks like it's at the bottom here. So how low is that? Looks like it's at negative four. So those are my uh, three answers for